Hey, folks, thank you for joining me. I've got my new friend here, Alan Kahn with Alan Kahn Consulting, as well as he is an executive coach for a Henley Leadership Group, does a little work for the Granger Network. This man is awesome. He's got 35 years of experience, uh, but more importantly, or more fun, he has also completed three 10, or 10 day long silent uh, retreats, which I'd make about 20 minutes through. He's been to every continent minus, you know, Antarctica, of course, and most importantly, he's been married for over 40 years. So welcome, Alan Kahn. It's great to meet you, Charles. Alan, how are you today? You know, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. That's a good answer. You know, I hear all the different ones that Dave Ramsey's always got better than I deserve, but I'm happy. I may have to steal that one. That's no, great. You know, well, when it's true, why not say it, right? No, that's perfect. I mean, uh, and you're coming out of uh, Portland, Oregon today? Yeah, I, I live uh, in Portland, Oregon, originally from the East Coast, grew up in New York and went to school in Boston and started migrating west in 1974. Migrating? You didn't take a covered wagon when you say migrating. Well, we, we stopped off in Cheyenne, Wyoming. I lived there for about uh, okay. 12 months and then moved to the West Coast. That is the original Oregon Trail minus exactly. the computer game. Well, tell me, Alan, uh, kind of, I always ask folks, give us the uh, the four-minute version, the Cliff Notes uh, I, uh, concept of kind of where you started to where you are now and how, how you got into this type of coaching, both for yourself Perfect. and uh, for somebody else. Perfect. Well, you know, I at, at a young age, I thought I was going to be an electrical engineer. So I, I went to MIT. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, and then discovered once I got there that, you know, really I was more interested in working with people than with things. Big difference. Uh, yeah. And in my senior year, uh, uh, a group of us started a, a restaurant in, in Boston. We were hippies at the time and sure. then I went off to live in a Zen monastery for a while. And, you know, from, a, from the age of 22 onward, I knew I wanted to use my life to somehow contribute to the quality of life for right. others. And um, went from being a trainer and a consultant with a, a large transformational consulting company, training company, and then in, 19, in 2014 started my own company and started working with like-minded people who are also interested in how do you break the grip that the past has on your behavior. So you're free to create and invent new ways of being, new ways of acting. And then after working with individuals, it seemed the logical next step was to work with groups and organizations. Since people spend so much time at work, mm -hmm. how do we make the work environment an environment that brings out the best in people rather than that one where people are looking at their watch. Right, trying to get, trying to get home. Today. Yeah. What kind of restaurant does a young hippie open? Well, a vegetarian restaurant, of course. Obviously. <laughs> we, were, we, we, were the root, we, we were the Root One Cafe, R-O-O-T-O-N-E, uh, and uh, right on Mass Ave and Beacon Street in Boston. Yeah. yeah. And was successful, and then we sold it and uh, and moved on. Well, that is a, that's a success story. I do a lot. Of, in addition to explainer videos, I also do business coaching and restaurants are absolutely one of the most difficult businesses to get oh, totally. up and going. Totally. So looking at the, where you are and now you, you, you said you were in a monastery. Uh, say, say it again. You said you actually joined a monastery for a period of time. Yeah, I lived in a Zen monastery, uh, in, in, uh, 19, uh, 72. Yeah. How long? Uh, you know, I was, it, the, the, the head of the monastery came to eat at our restaurant. <laughs> and he, uh, after one day workshop that he was leading that I attended in, in Boston, right. uh, I invited him and his fellow monks to eat there. And he pulled me over. He said, Alan, you know, how come the folks in the monastery can't make food as tasty as this? Would you ever consider being a cook? in the monastery. So I said, sure. Wow. And so about four months later, I moved to Rochester and uh, I was there 
close to two months and I realized that the difference I wanted to make in the world required me to be out in the world, sure. not, not sequestered. Yeah. So, so now that you're out in the world and you're doing your thing, you, you got a couple of different uh, options there. Tell us more about Alan Kahn Consulting. What is that business? So not to break it down to a business model, but to do that, what does that business model look like? Who are you coaching? What is it? How does that work? Perfect. Well, you know, I, I did some research uh, about two years ago. Where did the word coach come from? Because now we have life coach, business oh, coach. Oh, man, we, gotta we got divorce right. coaches, I, I see. Yeah, yeah. And the word coach, it, it up until the 1880s, all coaches had wheels. Right. And then, uh, you know, and sometime around 1880, 1890, in Germany and in England, coaches started having legs. And, you know, how did it make the jump? Well, a coach is something people would get in to go from point A to point B. Oh, so uh, a coach is someone who helps people go from point A to point B or organizations or couples or families go from point A to point B. So the uh, uh, model that I use, which is uh, uh, many people use, I'm not the inventor of this model, sure. is a coaching engagement, whether it's with a large corporation who I, where I work with folks at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation or Hewlett Packard or later today I'm talking to the, you know, anyway, uh, without divulging uh, sure. information. But uh, the first stage of coach of a coaching engagement is situate. Find out what's so. Get the lay of the land. The second stage of a coaching engagement is alignment. Align on point B. What's the outcome the individual, the team, the organization wants to accomplish? The third stage for me of coaching is implement. Develop a strategy that allows, that supports that group or individual to go from point A to point B and how long you predict it's going to take. And then the last stage is N. And, you know, which is critical because I do not want people or organizations reliant upon me. I want them to have the skills that they need to keep things growing and expanding right. without having to rely on me. Uh, and then when, you know, they're all done, I, I, I give them a little diploma and I say, you've now graduated from the coaching engagement. You can come back at a future time for some advanced work, but we've completed our work and here's the things you need to do to continue moving in a positive direction. Yeah. I come to Alan Kahn Consulting. Yeah. I'm Charles Alexander. Yeah. I let's say I, with my business, I create yeah. explainer videos, do some interview style videos like we're doing right now. Yep. So I, I tell you that I want to grow the business. Yeah. Which is, you know, which everybody says at every level. So yeah. I come to you. So the, but what's the next step? I'm going to ask you on our, before we even get down to work and we decide whether or not we're a good fit, I'm going to ask you, why do you want to grow the business? For what mm. purpose? For and what I can't purpose? just, and you're not going to let me say, well, Alan, want, you know, just be cool. I just want to make some money. It, you're going to I'll, hold I'll, me. You tell me you want to wake, make more money. I'm going to say there's plenty of folks out there right. who will tell you they're going to give you six figures, seven figures. That's not that's that's not the line of work I'm in. I'm going to say, what's your real purpose in growing the business? And if you don't have one, I'll support you in Got identifying you. one. Got you. So at that point, I say something smarter like I want to impact X number of people, help them tell their stories and make just enough money to pay off the house and X, Y, Z. Then we're on a roll. No, no pass. No pass. No, nope, not with me. I'm going to say, why? Ooh. Why do this? Why not do something else? Why not? Why are you doing this? See, um, either you're going to live life in order to get somewhere, or you're going to live life in order to be someone or be something. You know, have you heard of Simon Sinek? Of course. 
Yeah. So he's he says it's not the what, it's the why. Right. So I work with I'll work with you, Charles, to first identify your personal why. Okay. Why do you get out of bed in the morning? Most people get out of bed in the morning because they have things to do. Right. I get out of bed in the morning because there's something I'm committed to being. So at that point, you're taking this person and saying, all right, well, let's figure out before I kick you to the curb, let's figure out what your why is. What what is the the purpose and, of and then what? what's the and then what's the why of your business? Wow. So your personal why and your professional why for your business, you know, because you know, life's too short just to spend it doing things and getting from point A to point B. I, I think life is an opportunity to really grow, expand, contribute, make a difference, fulfill on something bigger than yourself. You know, uh, just as sidebar, you know, the when I work with people to come up with their mission or their purpose, some people say, well, that sounds religious. And I say, well, it is because the word religion originally meant before there were all these denom religion from the Latin or Greek. I'm not smart enough to know which one religion meant to be connected to something bigger than yourself. Okay. Period. Period. So what gets me out of bed in the morning is my purpose which is that all hearts are full and all beings are enlightened. And all so, hearts are full, all beings are enlightened. You got it. So let's say we come, we work on it. We figure out, I do have a why. You got it. All right. So the next step after we got a, a, a why is that we meet again and we figure out what What's, I'm doing versus where my why is. Exactly. To. And, okay. and why are you doing what, why do you want to help? people expand their businesses gotcha. why do you want to make videos if, if again if, if it's just i don't want to diminish it but if it's solely because i need a paycheck sure i'm going to work with you to come up with something more fulfilling and meaningful than just to make a paycheck and once we figure out what that is and we figure out what i so that's when we start uh, the alignment goes into the implementation. Then exactly what I'm doing now, I've got these new steps. Yeah. Where do you then what? Oh, and with a business, Charles, then what are your values? What values are you going to honor as you make your fortune? Okay. Because the ends do not justify the means in my book. So what are your values when we look at it that way? Yeah. My, my, some of my personal values are transparency, contribution, generosity, honesty. You got them yeah. on a plaque somewhere? Or are they on a? Uh... Oh, they're 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 in my heart. Good deal. So we get that down. We get the implementation to, uh, that reflects the values. And you're not like a lot of coaches. It sounds like, or maybe I misunderstood. There's an end. Yeah, always. I am not interested in a bunch of people being dependent upon me. I want, you know, you could say as a coach, I'm the middleman. I'm, I'm getting my stuff from someplace and then giving it to you. I want you to go directly to the source. So you get your stuff from the same place I am and you're equipped to be your own coach. Got you. How many sessions on average? And that's a loaded question. Uh, do, do folks do with you? It, it depends on the outcome. It depends okay. on point B. If, if all a person wants is to identify their purpose, we can get that done in two sessions. If, wow. what a, if what a person wants is not only to identify their purpose and the purpose for their business, but to have their business be mission-driven and values-based, that could take a couple of years, depending on the size of the business. You know, if you have a large ship, it takes a lot longer to turn it around than if you're just turning around a kayak. And you were telling me before we hopped on here, uh, your your clients for yourself yep. are kind of varied. Oh, totally. At, ranging from a 22-year-old college dropout 
to uh, you know a 55, 48, I don't know how old is cardiologist to uh, 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 a 52 year old owner. He started a business that's now a hundred million dollar business, you know, and I'm working with him, you know, the whole gamut. So look at, so talking about Alan Kahn consulting, and I know yeah. you already gave me the story of the Oregon trail in the seventies, which is going to lead right. me to knowing your answer of word of mouth and referrals. But other than that, how do folks find, what are you doing on a semi-consistent basis to, I don't know, let's just be blunt, say marketing your business. What are you doing there in order to folks to even know that you exist? You know, Ch Charles, it's a, it, it, I, I have an interesting uh, belief system my belief is that if you're doing, if you know what your purpose is and for your business and you know the market you want to reach, you want right. to serve, all you've got to do is let that market be aware that you exist. And if you're doing good work, you'll have more business than you can handle, really way more than you can handle. So, Back in 2014, I bought a domain name, alancon.com, and had a, never put a website together. I have no website. All I've got is I've got a LinkedIn profile, a Facebook page, and a, a bunch of really satisfied customers and clients who keep telling other people about it. So if you're if you follow what practice what you preach and you're in a complete alignment and you implement it, that's just gonna that's gonna make the business roll in. Totally. Totally. You know, so I get these, you know, emails, you know, oh, and yeah. LinkedIn things yeah. at least three a week. Do you wanna earn six figures, All seven right. figures? Non stop leads. Follow I'll, my I'll, I'll, follow I'll, my I'll, yeah, follow my simple twenty seven step process. And and I don't ignore any of them. I always wrote back, I say Thank you very much for the work you're doing. I have more clients than I can handle. Do, do, do you have any ideas on how to stop business coming? Right. <laughs> so take and switch gears. What are you doing with the Henley Group then? It's got to be semi-similar. Yeah, it's so great. With the Henley Group, that they, uh, uh, the one of the founders of the Henley Group uh, used to uh, 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 volunteer with an organization where I was in a leadership position and I was uh, her manager and had no contact with her uh, 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 for over 25 years. And I saw on Facebook that in 2014 that she was in Ireland having done some work with Guinness. And I reached out to her. I said, Carol, what you doing these days? And she said, I'm, I'm a coach. And I met with her and Dee Dee Henley, the founders, and they interviewed me. And it seemed like the coaching they were doing was in a harmonic with the coaching that I'm doing. So uh, they hired me to be part of their faculty. So when they come up with a client, whether uh, it's with a, a hospital, a tech company, uh, uh, an N a large NGO, uh, 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 they decide which coach in their faculty would be the best coach. And so they'll give me referrals. So does that uh, just be nosy? I mean, that doesn't mean you're an employee there. You're a, you're a sub of sorts. Then they you got it. I'm a contractor. Good for you, man. Yeah. So that's, uh, and I was describing this earlier, for those of you who are aware of the Matthew McConaughey model where he does a uh, big Hollywood blockbuster, one for them, and then he'll do like a little indie flick for himself. Alice follows the same model, or maybe uh, yeah, Matthew's well, following Alice. It's model. really good. You know, again, you know, it, it, this blows people away, but, you know, I tell people what I charge when they call me for Alan Kahn Consulting. And if it's a client that I want to work with and they, I can see in their eyes or in their expression that that's too much money, but I want to work with them because I support what they're up to. Sure. I, I will say, listen, if the money's a problem, just tell me what you are comfortable paying and I'll accept it. And, you know, so I've got people paying me anywhere from $75 an hour to $200 an hour. And I'm doing the same work. Sure. And over the course of the last eight years, three different clients 
who didn't pay the full amount during the course of the contract said, I'm not paying you enough money. <laughs> and they voluntarily increased their payments. So wow. that's the way I like doing business. I, I, I am not doing this for the money. I am doing it to be a contribution. And apparently the money follows. Yeah, it does. And, and then I work with a couple of NGOs pro bono. One is called Love is Greater Than Hate. Another is called Love is My Religion. Another is called New Avenues for Youth. And I just support their mission. They don't have any budget. And, you know, I, I work with them, you know, for free. So for a quick win for somebody, and it may not be a quick win, uh, humor me if it's not. Sure. Well, somebody's watching and they say, you know what, I, I keep hearing, I got to find my wife, find my wife. What's the first steps they need to be doing? Or is there a cheat code for them to say, this is this is my why. My why is not making animated videos for financial advisors. Or my why yeah. is not uh, creating websites. Or Well, it's so good. Like, what is I, it? That's so great you brought that up. I used to, one of my clients uh, uh, where we ended uh, was, it's called the Real Estate Investment Network, R-E-I-N. And they're in Canada, a, a great organization helping people figure out how to make money in real estate. With and they have good values and great mission. And I was coaching their their, their founder, their owner, the, the owner. Uh, he wasn't the founder; he bought the company. I was coaching the owner, and he got so much value out of the coaching that he decided to get me on his podcast. And he does a podcast called The Everyday Millionaire. So he interviewed me for podcast episode number six, and uh, it was all about finding your why. So yeah. what I'll do, uh, and then he got such a great response that he interviewed me three more times for three other podcasts. So what I'll do with people, oftentimes, before I'll even take any money, I'll say, listen to these two podcasts, see if you think, see if you like the sound of my voice, see if you like my background, see if you like my approach to life. And if you do, then we'll we'll start working together. And sometimes people come to the call just having listened to a couple of podcasts and they already have narrowed down what their purpose is, what their why is. But the fundamental question that to answer you more specifically, the fundamental question in finding your purpose is looking at what lights you up, what inspires you, what turns you on about contributing to others? In other words, if there was a button you could press and after you press that button, everyone in the world was being X, Y or Z, what would that button say? So for me, it's all hearts are full. All beings are enlightened. You know, for another client, it's all lamps are lit. He's poetic. All lamps sure. are lit. For another one is everyone's living a life of joy. You know, so it's always about the, how you're going to leave other people. What's the contribution your life is going to be in terms of the impact you're going to have in every interaction, whether you're in a pub, in a Starbucks, on an airport, or working like this with uh, somebody, you know, on, on camera. What's the impact you want to have? Yeah. That's pretty. That's a pretty good uh, way to end it. I, I always like to toss in a, a little softball here at the end, and I bet uh, this would be a, a, an easy one for you. In terms of somebody wanting to learn more about, let's say, their why. Yeah. Uh, and I assume I know exactly what you're going to say. Let's see if I'm smart. Uh, what book would you recommend uh, that they read? I don't know. I've never read a book about finding your why. I'm sure there's plenty of them out there. Uh, but I, 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 I couldn't recommend one. Yeah, sorry about that. Well, you had mentioned, I'm going to Google it and make sure I'm not crazy. Simon Sinek. Yep. Yeah, Simon Sinek. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was leading you down the wrong path. Though, but Simon Sinek has a book on why. Perfect. He, and, you know, he's, he's a great guy. Uh, you know, I, uh, uh, I've never met him. Uh, I've known people who've done his one-day course in sure. finding your why. I haven't, uh, you know, I, 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 my own, I tell people I swim at the shallow end of the pool. 
Uh, I'm not one of those deep thinkers. I know a lot of deep thinkers, yeah. but my job is to take their deep thinking and make it useful and applicable and easy to grasp. Yeah. All right. Well, folks, me and Alan are going on a 10 day silent retreat in Antarctica. And when we get done, we're going to read <laughs> Simon Sinek's wife. That's Alan, great. How can somebody get in touch with you? Uh, well, they can reach me at Alan at AlanCon.com. Can't get any easier than that. I love it. Alan, I appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us today. There's a lot of good info in there, and I, I'm going to start digging into my life. Great. How Perfect. How are you going, sir? Thank you.